Hi, welcome to the Twinsburg Mayor's Report. I'm Mary Kidd and I'm here with Mayor Ted Yates. Thank you for coming over. Sure, the forward. weather's finally nice. Yeah, it's been beautiful. Yeah. It really has been beautiful the last couple of weeks. So. Now you guys have a, uh, something big going on on Saturday. Yeah, so we have uh, planned, uh, and this is the, the city, uh, the Township Reminderville, the school district, the library, and the VFW um, have gotten together to plan the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Uh, so we kind of came together. Uh, really spearheaded by uh, by Kathy Powers, she started contacting us all, and and uh, we've just you know, each have contributed in different ways. But it should be a nice uh, should be a nice event. Um, I ask all the residents to come out, but it's starting at 10:28 um, on Saturday, so actually 9:11. Um, probably run for 45 minutes to an hour, so we're still finalizing the program. But we have a lot of great ideas on on how to really um, help people remember really what happened and all the significant impacts those had you know, during that time and then really throughout our lives how that's impacted our, our country and really every city we live in. Right. Um, and you know, if, if you miss it, uh, Community Focus will be there. Uh, check our website for the times and I'm sure you can watch it on our app as well after the fact. Um, tell me, you, uh, you have a new police chief. We do. So we, uh, as everyone knows, Chris Noga, uh, Chief Noga retired and we had our internal interviews, so we were really fortunate to have such a strong uh, group of leaders in, in our police department. Um, we had a lieutenant and three sergeants, and we ended up selecting uh, Lieutenant Mason, so Tom Mason is gonna be taking over as chief. You know, his first day in office is, is today, so I, I called him on my way here just to check in on him, but uh, he's, he's really excited. He's been working his whole whole career for this, this moment, and uh, uh, he's just so respected in the department and throughout kind of the, the Northeast Ohio Police uh, area, and we're just excited to have him take over. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, well, while we're on the topic of your police department, mm -hmm. why do they have a Corvette? So the Corvette, actually, we acquired the Corvette through uh, a felony OVI um, oh, okay. uh, arrest that occurred, uh, it's probably been 10 plus years ago, and um, at the time, uh, so when we do large drug bust or different, different types of, of uh, and there's uh, either cars or money involved. Like there was a few years ago, we had a large drug bust for where it was $400,000 worth of cash. And so a percentage of that comes back to the community mm -hmm. to be able to use for training and other things. Um, kind of happened with the Corvette. It got turned over to the city during this whole felony OVI conviction. And uh, we had our vendors who actually donated all the, the decals and we, you know, equipped it out as a police car, but but that's why we have it. But it really doesn't come out except for parades and stuff like that. Well, yeah. you can we don't chase down people on 480. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, those go really fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we could chase down people, but we we don't. It stays in the garage most of the time. Okay. Well, except when you want to go out to dinner or something. No, I, unfortunately, I've never driven it, so uh, I, you know, you'd think the mayor would get to drive right? it once. So maybe, maybe I'll figure that out one day. Okay. Take it for a spin. <laughs> All right. Now, um, what business is going in at Chamberlain in '82? That's a, it's a huge building. So Chamberlain '82, that's going to be another spec building. So when we talk about spec, so uh, like basically it's being built on the speculation that it can be filled. So oh. when when all that was redeveloped. Uh, there was uh, FedEx, of course, went in. You had Vistar there. Uh, you had Amazon that was built and O'Reilly. But the other, um, the other two buildings were just spec buildings. So they built them knowing that they could fill it. It's a very desirable mm. property from an industrial warehousing distribution standpoint. And this will be another one that really kind of mirrors the one that's right behind it. It looks so much bigger because it's sitting on the road, <laughs> but it's, it's really a, a mirror image of of the one that's behind it. Okay. And uh, I think they're already talking to certain tenants that potentially could go in there. So we anticipate that's probably the last piece of any development that can go in there. That's 167 acres that's now been fully developed. You know, and I think, you know, for Twinsburg, we're just really fortunate that that's just not a mothballed type car, old car manufacturing like mm -hmm. we see in, in other areas. Um, it'll never ever contribute to the city what Chrysler did from an income tax standpoint, but still, it's great strides ahead of what we, you know, in the beginning thought was going to happen to the property. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, your fire department, um, they have a new cadet program? Yeah, so this is something that Chief Morgan uh, started proposing a few years ago, and we kind of worked through the details of how it would look in the department, how it would look, you know, from them being employees and how they could. Uh, function and get trained and, and all that kind of stuff. So we do have a cadet program now where 
we're bringing in, uh, the two we brought in were explorers for the city, so they've been part of Twinsburg for a long time. They know the department, they know um, all the shifts there, all the guys and ladies that, that work for our department. And so it's been great to, to be able to, to bring them in. And I know they were heavily recruited because they were like one and two in their class coming out mm -hmm. of, of um, CVCC. So, um, so it's, it's, it's great, yeah, it's gonna be a great program. You know, it's really challenging when you look at, everyone thinks it's just police, but when you really look at fire also, to the recruitment side of those two, um, two industries right now are just really challenging. So mm -hmm. we're uh, doing everything we can to make sure we can bring people in, um, retain them, train them properly, and it's great that we have two young, two young firefighter wannabes that want to come in and be part of Twinsburg. But but they've been through their fire cadet training, so now we're going to help them go through. Um, I believe it's the paramedic training is the next step for them. Oh, that's so, terrific! Yeah, so it's yeah. great to have them on board. So these are young adults; they're not uh, Correct. They, kids. They just graduated high school. Okay. Just graduated high school. Yep. Right. Maybe you'll, yeah. they'll someday be chief. I don't know. Yeah, they, you never know. <laughs> they're 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 they're. I was gonna say they they did really great in their their fire cadet training. So I think they're going to be a great addition to the department. And yeah, they're going to go out and get the full experience um, that anyone else would. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, now I've heard people say, oh, I can't believe Sheets is closed in <laughs> Twinsburg. Yeah, no, Sheets hasn't closed. It was it was kind of surprising because I mean, whether it's been there a while, but it's still a newer gas station in mm -hmm. town. Um, when they came to us with plans of a full demolish and a rebuild, really on the same site, kind of taking up the same footprint, they're going to add a couple of different things in terms of the way that they're serving food and, and all that, and they're going to have some electrical, um, electric charging stations and different mm -hmm. things that will modernize um, the gas station. But yeah, it's coming back. They're, they <laughs> tore it down in a day, so <laughs> I don't think they'll rebid it in the day, but it'll be quick, I'm sure. All right. Yeah. Um, now, Twinsburg is starting its own League of Women Voters mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about that. I mean, what do they do? Is it just for ladies? No, I think the League of Women Voters is just basically a, an arm, a political arm out there that just helps get information out to the public. Um, they're just looking to uh, educate uh, residents on uh, different issues that may come up, uh, you know, whether it's information on judges that are up for election or, you know, local officials or state, federal officials. So, I mean, I think, you know, they're just trying to um, help create just more information and, and uh, encouragement in terms of the voting process and, and learning all you can before you go vote. And they're not affiliated with any party? No, mm -hmm. okay. no they're, they're nonpartisan. All right. Now, I, uh, I understand congratulations are in order to your seniors in Twinsburg? Can yeah, so they they compete. So we've got just a, a great uh, senior center. I mean, you know, we talk about it all the time. We have about 500 members that are part of it. Um, I know we're starting to ramp things um, back up, but but yeah, our, our seniors recently competed, um, and uh, uh, and just it was a you know a, a challenge that they did and uh, like trivia trivia kinda, challenge yeah. and did you know and they they placed in it so they you know but it, they do a lot of different. Uh, different events that really just showcase our, our seniors. But, you know, we have our own board there, which is great, and they help fund some of the things. But, um, but yeah, we're excited that we're able to now kind of slowly get them back up to full speed, you know, right. coming out of COVID. I bet they are too. Yeah, yeah. they are too. Uh, um, you have a tree planting program this year? Or so is that every it's year? It's every year. So okay. we have an annual tree planting program, and these are trees that are in uh, the right of way that are in tree lawns around the city. So some of them have been have to be removed because of the ash borer issues, and just some of them just need to be replaced. But each year we budget, it could be anywhere from fifty to a hundred thousand dollars for tree planting, and we do them all in the fall. I know so people get anxious about getting the trees replaced, um, and I'm just, we tell them to hold off. And we have a, a program that we do. So uh, sometimes it may not get to someone's tree this particular year, but usually it's scheduled for them the next year. But yeah, we do it every single year. So this is just replacing um, trees that have diseased or we lost um, throughout the city. Does the homeowner get to choose the type of tree? Um, no, typically uh, we would choose the type of tree that would go in there, mm -hmm. um, depending on what we're buying and what we're seeing as being, you know, healthy and that fits that particular area and the existing trees that are in that neighborhood. So we try to not put a completely different tree, you know, if we've got oh, a line okay. of trees that, you know, we're trying to keep a, a different architectural type look throughout, throughout the city. Now that, and maybe this is a question for an arborist, mm -hmm. but 
planting into in that tree lawn, don't the roots bother the mm -hmm. sidewalks? Sometimes, so we that leads into our sidewalk program. So we do have a sidewalk program that we budget about the same amount of money for each year, where we'll go as the trees age. Uh, sometimes we need to uh, replace those section of sidewalks if they've been damaged by by the tree okay. roots. So, right. and by doing that, it helps also save the tree. Um, but but we do that each year. So it could be a sanitary line or something that is sinking or or tree roots that are causing damage. But okay. but yeah, we we try to do that every single year also. Hey, I heard the golf course did great this year. Yeah, they're doing, they did really well. Um, you know, season's not over yet. We still have another couple really good months, um, but it's been one of the best years we've ever had there. And uh, yeah, it's exciting to watch, you know, now that we've, you know, COVID, we weren't sure what's gonna happen, but we had a really great year, even though we lost a couple months in 2020. And now 2021, we far exceeded that. And with, uh, you know, with, Aaron and Moses being taken over by a private group has really just helped that whole enterprise fund uh, tremendously. So, you know, we're working, we're, we're not gonna break even, but we're really working close, you know, to get to that point, hopefully in the in the next few years. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, Akron Zoo is doing a really nice thing for Summit County residents. Tell me about that. Yeah, so the zoo sent a nice letter to the, to the city with um, a stack of tickets, and I know that most, they want people to go online and, and get their tickets, but mm -hmm. yeah, for the month of September, it's free. I believe for up to four individuals in a household okay. to go and visit the Akron Zoo. I know, my wife and I are planning on going. <laughs> be a date night. We try to find things to do now that we're empty nesters, so it's, oh, right, that's gonna be right. one of the one of our, our date nights on a weekend. Well, that's a nice, that you out. know, it's it's not huge, but yeah. it's a very nice zoo. Yeah, no, we're, we're excited about going, and hopefully the residents take advantage of this, so we're trying to get the information out to everyone. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, now my last thing is something that everyone looks forward to, mm -hmm. Your doggy paddle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it, it seems to get bigger every year, but um, if you've never been to it, I, you don't even have to have a dog. Just go and watch it. It's, it's hysterical. It's, uh, but it's, it's fun. The, the, you know, when we close the pool down, you know, we don't let anyone human swim at it after that. Um, <laughs> we allow the dogs to come play and, and swim and, and have a good time. So, but uh, yeah, I think that's coming up on the 25th. So, okay. yeah. yeah, but our pool will have a, a couple more uh, I think weekdays and weekends that'll be open and then yeah, we'll shut it down for the season. Well, I had never been to mm -hmm. the doggy paddle mm -hmm. um, and I'm not really a dog person, you mm -hmm. know, they're fine. Yeah. But, and so I went with my camera last uh, year and, and it was pandemonium. These oh, yeah. dogs were just racing everywhere and chasing each other and having so oh, much yeah. fun. Yeah. And of course, Every single one would come over near me and shake. <laughs> would you yeah. stop? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it really is a fun, a fun day just to watch all the dogs and, and uh, you know, it's like watching little kids run around. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for joining sure. me today. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next month.